All right. Good morning. Can you guys see me? Give me a thumbs up if y'all can see me. Cool, cool, cool. Sometimes I get a little confused when I'm going from screen to screen. But good morning, everybody. Good to see everyone. Let me see if I can do this real quick. Good morning, Ja'Kalen. Good morning, Griselda. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Zesley. Good morning, Tamisha. Good morning, Champagne. Good morning, Ty. Good morning, Chris. And what's up, everybody? Staff, how y'all doing? Good to see everybody. So, per usual, we're going to have the same format. We're going to go through um, Bible. Then we'll do our we'll do our small groups and our advisories. And then we're going to do a few announcements, okay? So today's Bible is not going to be too long, but I do want to just get some interaction, get some feedback. So let's do a couple of things. So in the chat, and I want you to be very honest because this is going to help lead into today's lesson. If you had to put on a scale of one to 10, where let's say the first one would be, how happy are you? On a scale of one to 10, what would you put? And you can put it into the chat. How happy would you say you are on a one to 10? Mm. So as more and more are coming in, very few of us are on a 10, right? So whether it's a lot of things or a few things, most of us have something that's kind of weighing us down just a little bit, just a little bit, right? And I don't know if I put mine in the, I'm probably right there. Okay, let's do another one. So that was happy. I want to do one more. On a scale of one to 10, how encouraged would you say you are? Encouraged. So even if it's like, dang, I'm, it suck right now, but I know it's going to get better. How encouraged are you on a one to 10? Got a few more coming in. I'm liking these answers. Cool, 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 cool. So the reason I jumped into this, and this is going to be my intro, and then I'm going to pray us in. Today, we're going to talk about just kind of mental wellness slash depression. And so y'all know that our hope for the school year has been, our theme for the school year has been hope. And so we're going to talk about one practical way that that looks when you're just currently dealing with stuff. All right. So we're going to pray in and then we're going to jump into it. All right. So let's go ahead and pray. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for just waking us up this morning, Lord God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for um, just your continued favor, your continued grace, your continued mercy, even when sometimes it's hard to see it, Lord, but you're still faithful. You're still there, Lord God. You're still our hope. And that's a hope that does not put us to shame. So this morning, pray that you would just uh, speak a message that we need to hear. I pray that you allow us to be encouraged, allow us to um, have a little nugget that pushes us through those dark times, that helps us stay focused on you, stay focused on purpose, um, and just live a fulfilling life, Lord. So we love you and we thank you. We thank you for these students. We thank you for this time of fellowship and just have your way. It's in Jesus name that we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. So like I said, today is not going to be super long, but we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about like sadness or depression. So if you have experienced overwhelming sadness or depression, I'm going to say within the past year. So that will correlate with, you know, this COVID, all this stuff that's been going on in the world. If you experience a sensation like that, raise your hand. You can use your reactions. You can put a thumbs up in the thing. If you've experienced some form of extreme grief, raise your hand. Okay, I see a few hands going up in the cameras. I got a couple folks who have used reactions. 
by and large, most of us have experienced something that just had us down, right? And so what I want to talk about today is two things. It's going to be twofold. One, a hope that we can have in the Lord. And then two, practical steps you can do for yourself that you can just make sure that you're having self-care and upkeep. All right. So I want to flip over to some scripture. Let me get this pulled up. Give me just a sec. All right, give me a thumbs up if y'all can see this. If you can see the screen. Cool. So we're going to be going over Philippians 4 today. And Philippians 4 is one of my favorite verses. It's like one of my favorite verses in the whole entire world. So let me give you a little bit of background on Philippians 4. It was written by Paul, okay? Paul is just an OG in the New Testament. Paul and being locked up. Paul, he suffered crazy. Paul wasn't even a Paul wasn't even a follower of Christ at first. He actually used to persecute Christians. And then he had an encounter with the Lord and that encounter just changed his life. And he just became super zealous and he spread the gospel and he wrote many of the, he wrote much of the New Testament, okay? So that's the author of this book. And so as he's writing this to this group in Philippi, they're called the Philippians. That's why it's called the book of Philippians. He's writing this group to this people who have stuck by by his side. So he's writing to his day ones. These are his ones who, you know how you got those day ones on your team who no matter what you go through, they always support him. So these are folks who while Paul was in jail, they put money on his books. They sent him him snack packages. Uh, They sent people to go visit him. Like these are Paul's day ones. So he's writing them a letter of encouragement, okay? And so I think this letter is super applicable because right now we can use encouragement. I know myself there's been things that's just been heavy and weighty i know i've worked with you know um people at my church who you know in my prayer groups i'm just hearing these stories and it's like everyone is going through some things so i wanted to look at just paul's words today and kind of give us a let me see here one sec my i just let it go So I want to give us just some words of encouragement from Paul, someone who was suffering, someone who was in jail, and yet these are the things that he held on to, okay? So I'm going to look at a couple things here. The first one is Philippians 4, verse 4. And I want you to read from verse 4 all the way through verse 9. So let me get a volunteer to read verse 4 through 9, and that's the highlighted portion. Let me put it back on highlight. Got you. All right. I'll read. I'll start reading now. Yep. Go ahead and start reading. All right. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will let your reasonableness be known. To, I mean, be known to everyone. Hand. hand oh, I cannot see that. I'm sorry. You good. Let me move this. I have to move that. Uh, help the. to God all understanding uh, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ I mean brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is love whatever is commandable if 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 there is anything worthy of praise think about these things what you have learned, what you have learned, and received is hard, and uh, it's something in the front of the screen. Oh, and received and heard you seem in me. Practice these things, and God of peace will be with you. I keep going. Appreciate it, JD. Oh no, that stop right there. And then, uh, Mr. Shell, can we make sure JD gets a quiz pass? And so, thank you. So, what he is saying to his, what he is saying to these people, and times are hard. Also, you know, Philippi is going through some changes. Also, you know. And he's saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And I want to pause right here before I say this. Sometimes rejoice doesn't always come from a happy place. So as we looked earlier, when we was putting our numbers into the, into the chat, all of us not on the 10, like 
sometimes rejoicing, you have to force yourself to rejoice. You have to make yourself be like, you know what? I'm going to praise you even though I don't feel it right now. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to rejoice in you. And one of the ways that we always can rejoice is we think back over what things we have to rejoice about, right? And so I was having a moment and I had to think, Lord, thank you that I have a car, just simple stuff. I have a bed to lay in. I have my health. I got a job. So what I want you guys to make a practice of doing, and this would be like a separate assignment for you to do on your own. I want you to make a practice of listing out the things you are thankful for, okay? So that's the first thing I want you guys to take away. I want you guys to make, and you can do this daily. You can do this whenever you are just down. I want you to take pen and paper, and I want you to write down just a list of things you are thankful for, all right? Whenever you're rejoicing, it automatically moves your mind from despair to gratitude. So that's something I want to give you. That's, that's, the first, that's the first thing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Anytime you see something in scripture come up twice, that means the writer really, really wants you to get that, okay? So they are really emphasizing rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. And verse six is my favorite. This is my, this is my, this is my favorite scripture, y'all. So verse six through seven. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'm gonna highlight this last part. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So let me tell you why this part is such, is, is my favorite part. Whenever I get real stressed, if you like me, like I'm very type A, like I'm very much like, okay, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta get it. I gotta figure this out, I gotta figure this out. Whenever I come to something that I can't figure out, I get stressed. Whenever I get to a problem that I can't make sense of, it makes me anxious. And I'll just start having real a whole bunch of anxiety. This verse right here is so beautiful because if I just give whatever that thing is I don't understand over to the Lord, his peace, which surpasses, surpasses means to, to overcome, which means to be bigger than, to be grander than, to go far beyond. His peace that goes beyond my understanding will guard my mind and my heart. Raise your hand one more time if you ever had like a panic attack or an anxiety attack or you got real, real nervous. So I used to play, so I used to play baseball, right? And so whenever I would bat lead off, I would always get super nervous because I was the first one to hit. And so you don't want to start off the game look like no scrub and be like striking out. And so I'll be real nervous. I'll be real nervous taking my practice swings. And there's two places I would always feel my nerves. I would feel my nerves in my head because my thoughts would be going crazy and my heart would start beating real fast. Those are the two places that I've always felt my nerves and my anxiety. My thoughts, because they just start going crazy and my heart started beating fast. I know some people get headaches when they're real anxious or they're real stressed. Some people, you know, they have panic attacks and they have to like sit down and like breathe, all this kind of stuff. Your heart and your mind, and God knows this because he created us. Those are the two places where anxiety and stress rest on you the heaviest. And what God is saying, if you just give your problems to me, my peace is going to be a shield around your mind. It's gonna be a shield around your heart from those things. And I know for me, that's great news because even when I can't figure something out, I can't seem to get out of my own head. And so the only thing that can save me in those moments is God's peace covering my mind and my heart. So that's the second thing I'm gonna give to you right now. The first one, whenever you're feeling down or whenever you're feeling despair, make a list of things that you have to be grateful for. The second one is pray for God's peace. Pray for God's peace. So after you make your list of things that you're grateful for, say, God, have your peace cover my mind, have your peace cover my heart. This is not something that you're gonna be able to connect the dots and come to a, come to a rational decision on. 
you're you're stripping the power from you because God is saying you don't have to know it but I know it because I know it allow me to protect you even from yourself at times okay this final portion that JD read for us this last part he said finally brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. We're gonna pause here for a sec. Anxiety often comes when you're focusing and you're meditating on the negative. God is saying, train your mind to be able to see my goodness in different situations. So whatever situation you're in, if there's something that's true, Meditate on that truth. If there's something that's honorable, meditate on what's honorable. If there's something that's just, if it's pure, if it's lovely, commendable. Let me give you examples of some of these things. When the sun come out, the sun is just beautiful, it's pure, it's true. Enjoy a beautiful sunny day. Sometimes just get lost in that moment. Meditate on that and allow that to minister to you the goodness and faithfulness of God. Even if you know, it's something horrible, like you having a really bad day. Just enjoy the sunrise, enjoy the sun. Some of y'all like food. If you like me, if you eat a good meal, it'll stir you to worship. Sometimes just get lost in your meal. Like, Lord, thank you that one, you have provided for me to have a meal because some folks not eating right now. And thank you that this meal is so good. Get lost in the little things. And I struggle with this. Cause I, I'm always thinking big picture and I can get focused down on all the stuff that needs to get fixed. Get lost in the small things and focus your mind on that. Think about these things. And he tells them, think about these things, allow these things to steal your, steal your mind away. Then it goes to verse nine. He says, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So this is the final thing I'll say. So the first one is, we're gonna make a list of things we have to be thankful for when we go into those moments of despair. What things do we have to be thankful for? Secondly, we're gonna pray for God's peace to guard our mind and our heart. The last thing is, practice these things. Practice these things. We're gonna move this into like the physical aspect. So we're gonna talk about what practices are good for wellness, okay? And so some things that we can practice, we can do exercise. If you, if you enjoy exercising or you have an opportunity, please exercise whenever you can, okay? If you, if you have the opportunity to, to gather with friends, and I know that right now, we're in the midst of the pandemic, fellowship has been something that we have not been able to have. Even here at the school, we tell y'all all the time, we miss the students. Like the staff, we miss y'all. So whenever you get opportunity to gather with friends and loved ones in a safe way, capitalize, do that, okay? These are things that Paul would do. He would fellowship with the other believers. And so he's telling them, practice the things that you saw that I did. These things add to your joy. These things add to your experience of God, okay? When you're doing these things, you, under, you, have, a, you have a peace and God is the God of peace. You have a peace with you, okay? And so this is where I'm gonna close out because I wanna give you guys some time to talk in your advisories. But I wanna close out with this. No matter what thing you currently going through, no matter what setbacks you done had, no matter none of that, you have something to be thankful for. Right now, all of you are on the computer talking to us. So you have some form of shelter. You have some access to bettering yourself. Please make a habit of making a list of what you have to be thankful for and allow your mind to focus on that. The second thing, when your mind and your heart start going crazy, when you're having them crazy thoughts, when your heart beating fast, when you're anxious, say a simple prayer, God, allow your peace that surpasses all understanding to protect my heart and my mind. Send your peace, Lord, send your peace. Third thing, what practices can you do to keep yourself well? I want you to, exercise, if you enjoy reading, if you enjoy music, whatever things you enjoy, 
make sure that you're doing those things because those things are things that express God in different ways and they minister to you. If you enjoy food, God is ministering to you through the flavors and the aromas of the food. Music, music is always a way of worship. Exercise, being able to move and exercise and have your mind clean. All these things are aspects of worship. So make a list, pray and practice. Those are your three takeaways for today. And these are super applicable just because right now we're in a mental health crisis. So I've been doing a lot of watching, a lot of news, doing a lot of things on, on, on just research. And a lot of people are struggling right now. You've been isolated. You know, you had this pandemic. Some of us have lost loved ones. It's a lot going on. God has something to say about our mental health. So please take care of yourself. Know that us at the school, we love you. We are a resource. So I know that we've been folks, getting folks connected with counseling. We're still doing that. So just know that even beyond the school stuff, we want you guys to be okay as people. And so I hope that, like I said, Philippians, Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9, they're always an encouragement. So I hope that you guys feel that. And so now I'm going to send you all into your advisories. In your advisories, I want you to discuss three things. I want you to discuss what things you have to be thankful for. I'm going to put them into the chat, too. What things you have to be thankful for. What areas What areas do you need to pray for peace? And three, what are some wellness practices that you have? All right, so you're gonna discuss these in your groups um, and then I'll bring you back in I'm going to do 12 minutes and then we'll have announcements. So discuss these three things in your group. What things you have to be thankful for? What areas do you need to pray for peace? And that second one is, you know, when I'm, when I'm at school, I get anxious and I just need God's peace. Or when I'm with my family and stuff is just going crazy, I know I need God's peace in that moment. Or, you know, if I have to go to court or whatever it is that you get anxious or you have stress, what are those areas that you need to pray for peace? And then the third one is, what are the wellness practices that you have, that you currently have or that you want to implement, okay? So we're going to send you into your groups now, and I'll bring you back in 12 minutes. <laughs> 